What's up everyone, it's HK Gaming. Welcome to the Breakdown Project. In this series, we will be breaking down different items and gears in different games. So if you like this series, please let me know by hitting that like button or comment below. In this video, we're going to be looking at all legendary katana, the possible outcome that they have, the combination of the perk, and see what's good and bad about all this katana. Since the possible outcome of all the katana are the same, so let's go over them first. For perk 1, first possible outcome, melee damage. Increase damage from melee attacks. The game itself doesn't have a complicated mechanism. You don't have to do different work just to do damage. So boosting up your melee damage is the most efficient way to kill the enemies. I will almost always recommend having melee damage as perk 1. The second possible outcome is the melee resolve gain. Increase resolve gain from melee attacks and kills. If you are trying to build something that heavily rely on your ultimate, it could be one of your choice but the melee resolve gain bonus is very little to be even noticed. Melee stagger damage. Increase base stagger damage against enemy. In the game right now, if you are facing a human type of enemy, they will be basically dead after you trying to stagger them. Because you also do damage to their health while you stagger. And the human type of enemy are very easy to kill. And for the only type of enemy, they are super hard to stagger. After you stagger them, it does give you a window of a few seconds for you to attack them. But there will be too much work for too little, unless you are using wind stance. But Winston itself already does a super high stagger damage. So melee stagger damage isn't something that you really want, but it could be a choice. And next we have the perfect parry window. Increase length of time that an incoming attack can be parried. And it is very very noticeable. You can almost always perform a perfect parry. That works with the next possible outcome which is the counter damage. Increase damage on perfect parry and perfect dodge counter attacks. The counter damage itself does a decent amount of damage. The only problem is that you will have to wait for the enemies to attack. But if you're really into parrying, it is a very good combination of those two. For perk 2 possible outcome, the first 5 of them are the same, which is this 4 plus melee damage. The specialty of the perk 2 possible outcome is this ultimate damage. Increase base damage of the ultimate ability. This works very well with the melee damage. Next, we have the ability cooldown reduction. You would not want to give up a damage for uh, ability cooldown reduction. For all the classes that we have right now, the ability cooldown isn't really that long. It doesn't require a cooldown reduction for it to be a effective skill. In the game right now, it doesn't have a way for you to build a complete cooldown build that you can spam your class ability. But if you're playing Hunter and you are relying a lot on the explosive arrow, it could be a good choice. And next we have the only damage. The bonus damage is almost like zero. I would not recommend to use this whatsoever. Especially for perk 2, there are many good choices. The ultimate damage will be a perfect choice to work with melee damage. Or if you don't like relying a lot on your ultimate, the stagger damage is also a perfect choice. The difference between stagger damage and melee stagger damage is that melee stagger damage helps you to stagger the enemy faster. And the stagger damage is increasing the damage you do to the enemy after you stagger them. I recommend almost always having either ultimate damage or stagger damage as perk 2. This is the best choice. I mostly use the wind stance and the water stance, and both of it can stagger the enemy really really quick. Perk 3 Burning Blade. Melee attack have a chance to apply the burning effects, but the chances are very little. It is also the same as the poison blade. It doesn't trigger a lot, but if you like burning, then it is a good choice. The other way to play a fire build is the Way of the Flame. It is super powerful comparing to the Burning Blade. But the Burning Blade is a passive skill. You don't have to worry about cooldown too much. Poison Blade on the other hand, the effects really doesn't do much. 
So if you're planning to play a status effects spell, I recommend doing the Burning Blade or Way of the Frame. But the problem is that Burning Blade sometimes just doesn't trigger at all. I'm not sure if I'm just unlucky or the perks have a very little chance of triggering the burning effects. On the other hand, Way of the Frame is very stable because you have to activate it. It is super powerful when it's active. The only problem is that the duration is way too short and the cooldown is way too long. So you will not be able to use Way of the Frame a lot of times during a combat. And the game doesn't have like a dungeon or a raid that requires you to do a crazy amount of damage in a short period of time. So Way of the Frame is not going to be like a must have in perk free, but Burning Blade and Way of the Frame is a very good way for you if you are building a fire status effect build. And I would recommend doing Burning Blade over the Way of the Frame, since Burning Blade only take chances. So if you're lucky enough, it could be triggered a lot of time. But if you want to focus on the only type of enemy, you can use the Way of the Frame and then save it for the only enemy. Next, we have the Intermediating Counter. Perfect Parry Counter attacks have a 50% chance to also do damage to the nearby enemies. This for sure works with the Perfect Parry Window and Counter Attack. But some of the enemies attack cannot be parry. So this will be a fun way to play if you like parrying, but it could be very situational. And the rest possible outcome is about the stance. Three of them will give you a way to use other stance, but if you really want to use that stance, I really recommend you use the katana with that stance instead. Otherwise you will waste one perk just for the stance. But if you're using a katana that with a stance that you want to use, for example, if I want to use Water Sense, then I will choose a Katana with Water Sense. Then I can have this perk called Water Master. Increasing damage with each attack in your Surging Strike. Surging Strike is the attack that you charge with your Triangle. Different stands will have different effects with their Master perk. And it is super strong, so I always recommend to have it with perk 3. After we look at all the perks, so let's look at the Katana. First, let's look at the Yoshizune's hand. It is a water stance katana. Staggering a target has a 30% chance to cause a knockdown. Water stance itself is super strong, but just one thing to keep in mind that you cannot lock down a Oni. You can use it against all type of enemy and still stagger them. And after you stagger the enemy, they are basically dead. So having a knockdown isn't really that useful. And I test using the poison dot and then stagger them and you cannot cause a knockdown using this way. So it is pretty useless. I managed to try to stagger with the enemies at full health and this is what it looks like. The damage is a crazy amount, but there are too much work to do for a human type of enemy. I really don't recommend using this katana, but if you really like to use it, I have some of the combination here for you. Melee damage and stagger damage helps your DPS overall, and then Water Master makes Water Stand even better. Burning Blade and Way of the Flame is for you if you're building a status effect build. The last one is for you if you really like parrying. Next, let's look at the Master Katana. This is the most boring katana. You can use all four stands with this katana, but there's nothing special about this katana. If you like to use different stands for different enemies, then this is your choice. And also the last perk, which is perk 3, is a little bit special. Since you can use all the stands, the perk will turn into a master perk for all four stands, and you can choose one of them. This isn't really a good choice of a katana, but if you like, you can have melee damage, stagger damage, and burning blade. Since you have all stands for different enemies, you can stagger them very easily. So you have a high chance to apply the burning effects because they cannot parry your attack. Next, let's look at the demon cutter, a moonstone katana. Staggering a target has a 30% chance to throw nearby enemies. And moon master. Spinning Strike can combo 3 times. The final attack in the Heavy Strike combo still increases damage. This is what it looks like with the throw nearby enemies. But just keep in mind this is not a knockdown. 
so you cannot do that extra damage to the enemy. And for the spinning strike, you can see here it does a lot of damage and it also staggers the enemy pretty quick. To be honest, it is a very good choice. It looks very cool and it does a lot of damage, but just keep in mind that be careful not to let this happen. Since the animation is very long, you really need time and space for you to attack and do damage. So I recommend to have a uh, melee stagger damage to stagger the enemy faster so you have more time to attack. Or you can have this stagger damage. So after you stagger the enemy, you can use the spinning strike to burst down the enemy. Next is the Masamuna's Edge. It is a wind stance katana. Melee attacks have a 20% chance to do double damage and it does work with your ultimate. And we master, Typhoon Kick deals increased stagger damage and cause a knockdown. This is my favorite katana at the time. I use it in my build video and also with my mini master boss EO guy video. If you have not yet seen them, check them out. And this is some of the combination that I recommend using the Masamuna's Edge. Melee damage and ultimate damage work with the 20% chance to deal double damage. But if you don't like using your ultimate a lot, you can have the stagger damage. Having Wind Master will make you super crazily quick to stagger the enemy. And after that, you can do all the damage that you want. And the last choice is all about parrying. And we have the Stone Striker as our last legendary katana. You can now use Heavily Strike but it will cost you one resolve. So it works perfect with the class that doesn't rely on the ultimate as much, like Assassin. Samurai and Hunter's ultimate is way too good not to use it. But Assassin's ultimate is not that good. You can spend your resolve using the Heavenly Strike. Heavenly Strike against a staggered enemy does extra damage. Stone Master performs Stone Stance heavy attacks with faster speed and the final attack does increase damage. And this is what it looks like. The damage it does after you stagger the enemy is crazy. Just look at all this example. It is a very very strong katana. I highly recommend using this and the Masamuna's Edge. This two katana is the best. You only have to worry about dodging some of the attack. All the other time you just have to spam your triangle. Look at it, it's crazy. It does a super high damage with a crazy speed. The best thing is that if you miss the Heavenly Strike, it doesn't cost you any resolve as you can see here. And then this is some of the combination that I highly recommend. The best one is that melee damage with a stagger damage with Stone Master. After you stagger the enemy with that Heavenly Strike, it is crazy. And with Stone Master, you can easily stagger the enemy. Even if they are not staggered, they will be dead before you do so. And this is the two katana that I recommend using. Hopefully that helps. Leave a comment to let me know what you think. If you have a better combination, please let me know as well. But that would be it for today's video. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll be making more gaming videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.